and welcome to the Water Forums podcast on climate change and water, which is being recorded for the Science Foundation Ireland Science Week this year. My name is Trina McGrath and I am the research lead with the Water Forum. And before we get into the discussion today, I'd like to give you a quick introduction to who we are. So the Water Forum is set up as a statutory body to allow stakeholders, so key national stakeholders, to input into water policy development. The idea is to bring together lots of different perspectives and interest in water to talk about the challenges and then to find some common ground on how we can sustainably manage our water resources in Ireland. So we have an advisory role. We have to advise the government and agencies such as Irish Water or the rural water sector to make sure that any advice we give is based on the most up-to-date science we often seek out Ireland's experts on particular topics to support the debate and the advice that we give. So today we're going to be talking about climate change and what that might mean for our water. So for our drinking water supplies, for our water quality, and for our ecosystems, so our aquatic ecosystems. So we have brought together three leading researchers in Ireland who are experts in, in climate and in water to bring the discussion, to look at the challenges and what Ireland might need to do to ensure that we have a safe and secure supply of water in the future. So we're first going to go to Professor Connor Murphy from Maynooth University, who is going to tell us about the historical context of both climate change and of water availability in Ireland. When it comes to thinking about climate change in Ireland, we really need to place water at the centre of discussions. Many people would think that Ireland is water rich and we don't need to worry about things like drought in the future, but that's actually not the case. We've seen a decrease in the resilience of water infrastructure in Ireland over the last number of decades through a lack of investment in critical infrastructure, uh, through increases in population and growing demand for water resources. And really, in reality, uh, where our water resources are located is often removed from where our centres of population are. So there are real challenges for water resources in Ireland, even without thinking about climate change. But when we do bring climate change into the discussion, we'll see that changes in rainfall, which perform the input in terms of uh, water in our rivers for groundwater recharge, where most of our water supply comes from. Those changes in water can have real impacts on the amount of water available in the future, the quality of that water. And then that can be made worse by increases in temperature that can increase evaporation, making drought and extreme events more severe. When we look at historical records in Ireland, we're in a really fortunate position here that we have a, a rich pedigree of observations of meteorology, of rainfall, of temperature, going back over multiple centuries. And what they show us is that Ireland has had some really extreme drought events in the past. You may be familiar with memories from 2018 and the challenges posed by drought in 2018 for water resource management nationally. We had a hose pipe ban. We had problems with water quality due to increases in temperature and abstraction of surface water resources and knock-on effects for freshwater ecosystems. But when we look at the historical record, they show us that 2018 wasn't actually that remarkable. It was a short, sharp drought, but in the past records, there are plenty of examples of droughts that have lasted much longer and resulted in more significant impacts. If they were to repeat, given the lack of resilience in our systems, they would cause some serious problems. The long records also help us to understand the direction of travel in terms of how rainfall is changing and how temperature is changing. And we've seen increases in temperature in Ireland that are very consistent with what's been happening globally, largely in line with increases in greenhouse gas emissions. And in rainfall records, we've seen that the last 300 years have been the wettest on record, going back over multiple centuries. So they tell us that direction of travel is pushing us towards more seasonal rainfall, higher temperature extremes, and more extremes of floods and droughts at the same time. When we think about how we manage water resources into the future, climate change has to become part of the discussion. How are we going to ensure that our critical infrastructure is able to deal with decreases in rainfall and more extreme events? How are we going to ensure that humans and other water users, like freshwater ecosystems, like biodiversity, have an equal right to the water that is available and how our legislation, our policy, is able to deal with that? And we need to think about the things that we can do as individuals in order to decrease our carbon footprint. We're familiar with the concept of a carbon footprint. We also need to think about that in how we use water in terms of water efficient appliances, in terms of not leaving taps running when, on, when it's not necessary, and in terms of how we use water and value water in our day-to-day -day lives. All of this from the individual, 
to the national and the regional development of sustainable policies that place water at the centre of things in thinking about climate change is the only way we realise a climate resilient Ireland into the future. Water is critical to the resilience of our economy, to our society, to public health and to public well-being. Thank you, Connor. So I'm joined here today by Dr. Michelle McKeown, who is an assistant professor in environmental science at University College Cork, and Dr. Fia Grow Lachlan, who is an assistant professor in hydrology from University College Dublin. So these two researchers are currently looking at um, climate change and the impacts on water in relation to national policies uh, to support the forum's advisory role. So in relation to your research, what are the impacts that climate change might have on water quantity, Fiacra? So for water quantity, we need to think of two sides. We need to think of the flooding and we need to think of the droughts. So we know certain things with climate change, what's going to happen. We know we're going to see increasing temperature across the country, especially in the summer. We also know on an annual cycle, we're going to see less rainfall taking the annual. So we know in certain parts of the country, we're going, this is going to have major impacts. With less rainfall and higher temperatures, we lose more water back to the atmosphere. So say in the Midlands, the East and the South East, we're talking best case scenario, five to 10% less water in certain catchments. In worst case scenarios, by the end of the century, we're talking 35%. There is a few outliers on the West Coast that potentially will get wetter, but there is uncertainties on this. Then, on the other hand, we have flooding. Now, flooding, the annual cycle means nothing there. Flooding is mainly driven by heavy rainfall that exceeds our banks, our rivers and streams causing flooding. We see this happening even now. We see impacts of climate change already occurring with our flood events. If you think last Christmas in Wexford, we had unprecedented rainfall that wiped out a huge area of Wexford, Wexford County that this is going to become more and more frequent in the future because we're going to see these heavier, more intense rainfall events are going to occur at any time of the year. So we have to be prepared for that. So, so we'll have more frequent extreme events, but in the long term, we're going to see a drier, um, you know, drier conditions for Ireland or extended periods of drier period um, in the country. Yes, but I would argue that that's an extreme event either. We're, we are a country that's known for having plenty of water, but in the future, we're going to start seeing that we don't have plenty of water. And we're seeing it already where, take Dublin Airport, the weather station at Dublin Airport, it's recording less rainfall over the last couple of years than ever. Yeah. So, and in relation to water quality then, Michelle, um, so what might, in, in, we've got future climate change, what might that mean on, on for the, the impacts on water quality? So already to, uh, in today's Ireland, we have impaired water quality is a big issue. Um, the EPA released a report um, just last week um, that showed that uh, over 50% uh, of our water is in good condition, which means that uh, when I talk about this, I'm saying our water bodies are lakes, our rivers and our streams and our estuaries and coastal waters. However, that means that 50, or just under 50% are polluted. Now, those, pollution, uh, those pollutants are coming from um, nutrients, for example, that come from agricultural land, that come from, um, for example, looking at manure and fertilizers, also pesticides, um, but also from urban areas and industrial activities as well. Um, so we can even see like pharmaceuticals and uh, pesticides being um, big uh, issues now in our water quality, but also sediment as well uh, coming off the landscape. So that's today what we're seeing, we're having these issues, we're seeing a deterioration in some water bodies. Now under future climate change scenarios, we're going to see that we're going to have increased temperature. And with that, and altering precipitation patterns, and with that, that's going to alter um, how some contaminants uh, move from our land into our water bodies. And also it will show kind of how um, things like uh, cyanobacteria blooms. So they're blooms that we guess are commonly called algae blooms, uh, but they're actually not in algae. And um, some of these blooms can actually release toxins. Um, so what we're doing in our lakes, for example, in some of our rivers is we're creating this perfect cocktail of high nutrients and warmer temperatures for more of these blooms to potentially be an issue in the future. And Ireland uh, likes to present itself as this lovely, clean, green kind of um, country where we, a lot of this is promoted in our tourism, for example. But if we have more of these potentially toxic um, blooms in our lakes and our rivers, um, then this would actually potentially have knock-on impacts.
impacts even on our tourism and also our ability to swim in our own lakes and rivers. Yes, so when Fiacra mentioned we'd have maybe, we could have, we could see more extreme flooding, mm -hmm. for example, or extreme events, what would that mean then for our water? So that's actually a good question. So that's going to um, mobilise some of these contaminants that are on land. So during a drought period, these contaminants will sit on land and they will accumulate and then during a high rainfall event, um, they will actually be mobilised then back into our rivers and our lakes. Um, so we'll have these big um, flux periods of contaminants being actually moved into our water bodies as well. So yeah, so with our altered precipitation patterns uh, where water moves, um, a lot of contaminants move with it. Okay. And so, I mean, already we sometimes see issues on, let's say, if there's a high rainfall in our bathing waters. And so you'd often hear people say, oh, you know, we've, had, we've got poor bathing waters because of heavy rain. Um, but it's not because of heavy rain. It's, well, it's the rain has just moved the pollutants from the land and that's causing then so higher levels of, of bacteria, for example, at our beaches or lakes. Exactly, yes. yes. So yeah. it's like uh, things on land get transported and it's that transportation from our streams and our rivers yeah. down to our coastal um, bodies and then they're washed back up on the beaches and everything. So it's causing, yeah, we can see around um, Dublin, for example, and Galway, we're seeing uh, E. coli levels increase. And, um, in our beaches, which means that um, they become not the best swimming centres that we yeah, want to be, and yeah, that has a knock-on impact for obviously human health. So, how ready are we then in relation to, you know, how how, how ready are we to deal with that, Fikra? Um It's a mixed story. We have a national flood uh, management plan that the OPW have set up how to deal with climate change. They do a very national scale picture, which. Some people say it's good, other people say it's not, but at least the OPW are looking at ways of updating that at the moment. On water security and droughts, we have some national drought plans, but they're not anywhere near the level. They don't project far enough. So we have a situation where Irish Water, with their national water resource plan, it's a five-year plan. They, they do look at projections up to 2040, but if you think about trying to get a water resource online, it's not 20 years. If you think about the pipeline, the diversion from the Shannon to the greater Dublin area, that's been talked about since the 70s. Mm -hmm. So you're talking for these large infrastructure plans to be able to deal with this reduction in water. You're talking about need be thinking about national drought plans looking 40, 50, 60 years into the future and being updated when new research comes out that they're always at the cutting edge. Waiting for a five-year plan and doing it in a five-year plan, you're never going to have the resources there or the foresight to actually adequately deal with this, this problem. And um, in Irish Water's National Water Resources Plan, which you mentioned, um, so Irish Water have already said that 58% uh, of our water resource zones, which are where we take our water for our drinking water supplies, they're already at risk from not having enough. So they have a supply demand um, deficit and if the, in drought conditions they're um, I think it's 66 percent where they're at risk so this is currently this is the situation at the moment and so we really we do need to start planning for the future if it if this if we're going to have more pressure even on our on our water system and to make sure that we have a resilient supply of water into the future and like it's a conversation that everyone thinks Ireland is a west country we get a lot of rainfall but if you take one of the, even now, one of the wettest parts of the country, the southwest, in Cork, West Cork is under um, water restrictions or was under water restrictions a couple of months ago. Like that's unprecedented that that happens. And like the West Coast is fine, but then when you start looking at the East and the Southeast, there are agricultural heartlands. There where most, the largest amount of population is. They're the ones that, where climate projections show that are going to be most at risk. So when we're thinking of future climate change, um, what do we need to think about then in relation to water quality? What do we need to be ready for? So uh, we need to look at the source of our contamination and um, with that is related to our land management practices. So how the, those contaminants then are moved from our land into our water. Um, so we, rather than be reactionary, we need to be proactive in our land management. And if we're active and we actually have have more sustainable land management practices, this will improve, hopefully improve our water quality um, in the future, particularly under the stress the future climate change is going to put on our water quality, on our water bodies. 
Uh, I think that people often are disconnected with where our water comes from. You know, when we turn on our taps at home and we don't think about where it came from and all the different uh, pressures that the water has been on. And then, then also about all the, the treatment that has happened, we'll say, and the energy that has been spent, we'll say, before the water gets to our taps. So it's interesting to think about that. And I think that if we can take the approach of the source protection, so thinking about the front of pipes, so all the things that we can do to protect our water from the start, rather than putting all our eggs in one basket for the treatment at the end, will be critical, won't it, for, for thinking about future climate change and, and, and our water supplies. I completely agree. Um, before I even got into this um, job, really, into my role now, I, di I didn't really think about when you turned on the tap. I just assumed that there would be water there and that that water would be of good quality. And I think that that's something that um, for any of our listeners, if they want to kind of think of where their water is coming from when they turn on the tap, um, how it's been treated and where it's actually been taken from. Yes, absolutely. So clearly our government and our water suppliers have a lot of planning to do in relation to climate change and um, what we need to do to protect our, our water supplies and also to ensure that we have enough or a resilient supply into the future. Um, we also have to consider, I suppose, that we have increasing population, and so there's going to be many different pressures together. But if we think about uh, what can people do at home, what can we do at home in relation to water and um, you know, trying to protect our water supplies and our ecosystems? We can try and conserve. It's the easiest way to do is trying to conserve. Every little bit helps, where that's turning off your uh, water when you're brushing your teeth. And I've had, talking to my students over the years, that has changed. That's young people changing. Um, other things is installing water butts. I never thought I'd ever see my parents, my parents-in-laws having water butts for the garden, but they do. Like, these little things make a big difference. It's only a little bit of water in the general scheme of things, but if everybody does it, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. What about you, Michelle? Um, in terms of um, our listeners thinking about their gardens maybe at home, um, maybe using things like uh, fertilisers and pesticides in your garden. Um, so maybe look into do you actually need to use them, um, can you maybe use less? Um, and just thinking about the pathways of when you put something on your garden, where does that actually go? Um, but also consumer behaviour towards um, products like, uh, for example, um, when you're using your scrubber for washing the dishes. Um, so even those like microfibers and things like that can actually get into the good end of the drains and into your wastewater system. So it puts pressure on them to remove. So I think there's a lot we could do um, with, I suppose, um, more of maybe sustainable consumer behaviour. Mm -hmm. We yeah. need to join the dots, don't we, between the environment where the water comes from and then the pressures, that w the activities that we're doing and how that puts pressure back onto the place that we actually take our water from. Um, and, and also, if you think about, I suppose, in the, in the home, 20, nearly 20% of our energy used is on heating water. So if we're thinking about conserving water, if we can conserve water, we're also going to... Um, you know, reduce the amount of energy that's needed in our safer showers or baths or, or dishwashers or washing machines. So again, where we need to think about this, you know, think about all the things together and, 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 and the different ways that we can both reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and, and you know, efforts to mitigate climate change and then look at um, ways that we can protect our water. So there you have it. A very interesting discussion today on climate change and what that might mean for water in the future. And clearly the discussion and research is showing that we need stronger government policy to, to better plan for future climate change and ensure that we have high water quality and protecting um, our water supplies. So we can all do our bit at home. We can think of ways where we can protect our environment and protect our water sources, while at the same time using less water and helping to protect our water supplies in the future.